Hey everyone, it's OSK, and this is the ultimate movement guide for Naraka Blade Point. In this guide, we're going to talk about the basic movement of typical Naraka Blade Point gameplay, and we'll dive into some advanced stuff as well. I'm not going to cover any character abilities in this game, but just play Matari like I do if you want some extra dashes. I much like the movement in this game. I'm going to keep the guide quick and fluid, so strap in and let's get moving. First things first, let's go over the basics. You can walk, run, sprint, dash, crouch, slide, jump, hop, double jump, climb, wall run, cling, drop, fast fall, and grapple. If I miss one, I don't want to know, but I know you'll put it in the comments anyway. In order to dash or dodge, you have a stamina bar, and these two things are the only moves in the game that deplete that stamina bar. You need to dash to sprint and dodge, so if you run out of stamina, you're not going to have a fun time. This will open up one of our later concepts. The other resource you have in your kit is the grapple spool, which is used every time you successfully grapple. Imagine that. In most circumstances, the grapple spools are much more plentiful in a fight than your stamina bar, so you don't have to limit yourself as much as long as you have some extra spools in your inventory. There's really no secret to getting good at the movement of Naraka Blade Point. You're just going to have to play the game and practice the cadence of the game. It's more methodical like a fighting game, and it can take some getting used to, so don't feel bad. It took me about 11 hours of playtime to finally get semi-comfortable with it, so just play around with it and you'll get it. Now that we've gone over the basics, let's get into some advanced moves you can do. First, you're going to want to know about slide hopping. Yes, I am just making these names up. I didn't ask any veterans what they're really called. Slide hopping is done by sprinting, sliding, jumping, and repeating. This lets you go slightly faster than regular sprinting speed and is great for chasing down enemies trying to run away, mixing up your movement, and just traveling efficiently. By the way, you can also do an uppercut by sliding and pressing right click with most melee weapons for a knockup, so you can mix up your opponent in a fight with this too. For the second, there are plenty of options to move out of a grapple. By continuously left clicking while grappling, you will conserve your momentum and attack while moving. Hitting right click will do a heavy slam straight down that can knock down opponents and start tech chases in combat. You can also jump and fast fall out of grapple and then grapple again, so there are plenty of ways to mix up your movement efficiently. Third, you can cancel your sprint by charging a focus attack and shifting forward. It'll help close the distance while also shaving some time off your charge attack and you can cancel out of it as well with another dash. They are useful for chasing down and surprising opponents to get into a tech chase. The last advanced move I have for you is the run up scale rush. A scale rush is an attack performed by wall clinging and immediately charging up an attack to dash to your cursor and attack while doing it. It's a very powerful attack and can also help you move around quite well while putting out pressure in certain situations. Now let's get into some concepts to keep in mind while you're in game. First, you want to always make sure you're moving with a purpose in mind. So many times I see other players just randomly dash and jump and grapple when they don't need to in fights and in chases, and they really don't need to do as much as they are. You want every action to have some benefit to what you're currently doing. If you're running through the map, it should be to find loot, get into the next zone, get to a good place to defend, or hunt down other players. You never want to be running around with no real reason to. Same thing applies to while you're in combat. You don't really want to be randomly throwing out options. If you dash or jump, for example, it better be to dodge a dangerous attack, approach a fleeing opponent, or to create space for your ranged weapon. Bottom line is just to try and know why you're moving the way you're moving and ask yourself after the match if you needed to move in the way that you did to advance your advantage. It will help you improve tremendously if you have the right mindset and will make you more efficient, and most top Naraka players do this without thinking, even if they don't realize it. This next concept is a bit of a short one, but it's so important nonetheless, and that's conserving your stamina. We kind of mentioned this in the previous section, but it's so important that it deserves its own. Conserving your stamina exclusively applies to your dashes and dodges, and in normal Naraka blade point matches, you can typically dash twice in rapid succession before running out of stamina, and dashing is needed to start sprinting, which is needed for a lot of advanced techniques that we mentioned before. When you move through the map, you want to avoid double dashing and using a dash when you don't need to. Naraka has an auto run system that does a good job in general of keeping you in your sprint animation unless you run into some weird terrain, so you don't need to dash as much as it seems in the beginning. Especially if you get grappled or hit out of nowhere, you want to have the extra stamina available to you to dodge or get away if you need to, so don't spam your dash for no reason and try to conserve your stamina as much as possible. Next we have positioning. Due to the fact that we have a grapple that lets you access high areas, positioning is admittedly a less important concept than the others, but it's still important. It's always easier to travel down to something than it is to climb up to something else, and this applies to Naraka as well. Thus, you usually want to start a fight from a height advantage. If you're maining a raised weapon, this gives you some extra angles of attack and helps with the bullet drop as well with weapons such as cannons and muskets. It's also great to get a combo starter, as a heavy downward slam is almost a guaranteed knockdown, and from there, you can tech chase into a true combo. 
Learning proper positioning and how to utilize it effectively is essential to gaining micro advantages that will lead to more kills and more victories. Bonus concept that I didn't include initially is using your movement options for animation cancelling. The key point here is moving as fast as the game possibly allows you to, and mastering animation cancelling will give you access to different moves that the game normally doesn't allow. One example of this is using crouch cancels to reset your weapon's attack combo. This will let you stop yourself from automatically entering a weapon's charge attack and will let you have more control over a fight. We've also gone over an animation cancel earlier in slide hopping which lets you travel faster. And there are plenty of these in the game and I know for a fact I haven't discovered all of them yet. The best way to learn as many as possible is to spend some time in practice just experimenting with different options and also watching streams from top players which is how I learn how to move as effectively as possible. So to recap, spend some time in practice to get used to your movement options, practice using them in combat to mix up your moves and throw off your opponents, make sure you're moving with a purpose, conserve your stamina as much as possible, position in a way that gives you an advantage, and of course, master those animation cancels. Thanks for stopping by everyone. If you want to show your support, you can leave a like on the video and subscribe for more content. Make sure you also follow the socials, and I gotta go. I've been OSK, and y'all have a great day.